In just a moment, enjoy Best Plays. First, we'd like to remind you that weekdays, too, this NBC station entertains you royally. For quiz, there's a trio of top shows, Red Benson's Phrase That Pays and our two newest editions, Second Chance and It Pays to Be Married. There's great comedy with Bob Hope, interesting guests with Dave Garraway, and Tommy Bartlett's Welcome Travelers. And, of course, the accurate reporting of NBC's Pauline Frederick and Morgan Beatty with his News of the World. All great shows, and all, of course, on NBC. Right now, though, it's Best Plays on NBC. From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas selected from the outstanding successes of the New York stage. Now, John Chapman, drama critic of the New York Daily News, is here to introduce Margaret Phillips and Paul McGrath in There's Always Juliet by John Van Ruten. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Thank you. And welcome to our audience. One of the most gifted and most successful writers of light, intelligent comedy is John Van Druten. And our play for this performance is an excellent example of his work. Mr. Van Druten is never a one to waste any time, meaning the time of his characters and the time of his audience. He likes to make his people fall in love very quickly and very thoroughly, as, as shortly is going to happen in There's Always Juliet. Mr. Van Druten also has a great sense of economy. He likes to deal with as few characters as possible, because in this way, he can give each of them more time and make each of them as interesting as possible. The most popular of all his comedies, The Voice of the Turtle, had only three people in it, the two who fell in love and an extra girl who wasn't around very much of the time. In There's Always Juliet, there are only four. Dwight, a rapidly affectionate American architect, Leonora, an English girl who can come to brisk conclusions, and a couple of friends and helpers. The original Dwight and Leonora were Herbert Marshall and Edna Best. Miss Best was Mrs. Marshall at that time. For this performance, we are fortunate in having Margaret Phillips and Paul McGrath. Miss Phillips has proved herself an excellent actress in such plays as the late George Apley and Summer in Smoke. Mr. McGrath has distinguished himself in at least a dozen Broadway successes including Susan and God and Lady in the Dark. One of his most vivid roles was in Command Decision. So, now, let's ask our company to begin with There's Always Juliet. The time between the wars. The place, that outpost of an adult never-never land, a sitting room in the West End of London. The girl, Leonora Pentecost, who after a great deal of internal struggle, approaches the telephone and dials a number. Hello? Is Mrs. Enfold in there? Oh, Betty, this is Leonora. Yes. I say... Did I leave my cigarette case there this afternoon? It's got my initials on it. Oh, d don't bother now. Nice party, Betty. Oh, um, by the way, who was that nice American man? You know, dark and rather nice looking. Oh, is that his name? Oh, who is he? Oh, I see uh, Tom and Catherine brought him, did they? Uh, what? Oh, no reason. I, I just thought he seemed nice. What are you laughing at? Well, what's the matter? Oh, all right, be mysterious. About the what? Oh, yes, the, the cigarette case. Of, yes. Uh, thanks. Goodbye, Becky. I thought I heard you come in, Miss Leonora. Excuse me, are you busy, Miss? No. What is it, Clarence? You haven't heard from your mother, have you? About when she's coming home, I mean. Sometime next week, I think. Why? You're getting anxious? Oh, no, Miss. I, 
I only just wanted to know for the dentist. Why is he interested? No, miss, but it's my teeth. You see, I've been having trouble lately. It's my wisdom. And Mr. Parker says I'd better have it out. Oh, dear. And, and seeing that it's sort of wedged in like, and I'm not good with gas, it might mean a day in bed oh, just for the shock. So I thought perhaps I ought to get it out before they come back. Yes, well, all right. There's no need for you to upset yourself. You needn't know anything about it till it's all over. Well, that makes me sound like a prospective father somehow. Yes, miss? It's all right, Florence. I was being funny. Oh. Oh. <laughs> really, Miss Leonora. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Miss, the door. Oh. Is it 3-5 five or 5-3? Five, Try three? both. A gentleman, Miss. He gave me his card. Oh? Oh, is he here? Yes, Miss. I told him you were dressing, dressing to go out. Oh, oh what's the time? Just on half past seven. Oh, all right. Sh show him in. Oh, I'll ask him to wait. And bring in the cocktail things, will you? Yes, miss. Excuse me, miss, but if you've got to be at that dinner party by eight... Yes, Florence, now show him in. Oh, dear. Won't you come this way, sir? Uh, yes, thanks. I expect Miss Leonora will be back in a moment, uh -huh. sir. Won't you take a seat? Thank you. If you'll excuse me, sir. Hmm? Oh, uh, of course. I'm sure she'll be back in a minute. Oh, uh, uh, Thanks. I have to put this tray down. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right, sir. Uh -huh. Hmm. Port? Oh. Hello. Hello. You, uh, don't mind my coming? No. Did you expect me to? Well, I, I, I didn't know. You didn't think it nerve? Well, no. As a matter of fact, I didn't. Do you think I ought to have? Well, I was afraid you might. Yes, uh, well, uh, you were looking at the port. Yes, is that an English custom port at cocktail time? No, it's a habit of father's. Florence thinks all men are the same. Oh, is your father here? No, he's at Fishy. Because of the port? Yes. Oh. Well, uh, sh shall we sit down or something? Uh, uh, won't you have a cigarette? Oh, thanks. Uh, won't you? Oh, thanks. Well, let me make you a cocktail. Well, can I help? No, it's all right. Uh, uh, how did you find me? How, how did you get my address? I called up our hostess and asked where you live. Oh, did you? So that was what? What? Oh, nothing. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? Oh, nothing. No, nothing, really. Well, our hostess wouldn't tell me where you lived. I I think she uh, suspected my motives. Of course, we haven't been introduced. I know. What do we do about it? Well, I... Uh, we could introduce ourselves. Oh. Uh... <clears throat> Uh, Miss uh, Paragas, this is uh, Dwight Houston. Uh, how do you do? I'd like you to know him. We were at school together. I want you to be great friends. Uh, how do you do? This is Leonora Pericost. I've known her for years. You two ought to have a lot in common. Oh, yes? Yes. Now, I think I'll leave you two together. <laughs> Will that do? Oh, I should think so. What happened to you at the party? I, I looked for you everywhere when Catherine dragged me away. Where were you? Oh, I suppose it must have been when I was in the pantry helping to wash the glasses. I never thought of looking in the pantry. When I got home, I called up and asked for your address. On um, what pretext? Why, oh, I, I told the truth. I wanted to see you again. Well, how very nice of you. Charmed, I'm sure. Uh, a cocktail's ready, I think. Uh, here. Oh, thanks. Oh, fine. I, uh... I, I was hoping perhaps you could dine with me. I'm dining out. So you may have said. I'm sorry. I'm dining out, too. Uh... <laughs> of course, I, I could duck it. Could you duck yours? Oh, I'm afraid not. Are you sure? Mm. I'm sorry. Uh, what uh, time is your dinner? Eight. Where? Miles away. May I drive you there? Have you a car? In a garage in New York, but oh. we'll get a taxi. I wish you weren't going out. Be late anyway. Why, come. Just a, a little late? J just enough to be distinguished? <laughs> Please. Uh, look here, w w will you give me five minutes, just five minutes to try to make you want to see me again? Then if I fail, I'll, I'll, I'll go quietly. And if you succeed? Then I'll come back, if you let me. You're not dining with that man who was at the party. What man? The one who dragged you away from me. Oh, no. You're not engaged to him or anything, are you? Good heavens, no. Oh. <laughs> you, you're not married or uh, engaged or anything, are you? 
I don't quite know what you mean by or anything. But you're not? No. You know, I, I was scared stiff I'd be thrown down the elevator shaft when I came over here. May I have another? Well, help yourself. <laughs> Uh, are you ringing to have me thrown out? Oh, no. Give me some more. <laughs> I think you're swell. Don't mention it. Oh. You rang me? Uh, yes. Uh, will you telephone Mrs. Waverty and say I've been delayed? Uh, say I'll be a little late. I I'll get there when I can. Yes, miss. What uh, reason shall I give? We don't give any reason. Just say I've been delayed. Very good, miss. That's grand of you. Uh... Do you know London well? Uh, no, very slightly. Less than almost anywhere else, as a matter of fact. Oh. Does that mean less than almost anywhere else that you've been to, or just less than almost anywhere else? Well, it's the same thing, really. Oh, well, that's what I meant. I, I mean, I meant, was it? Well, was it what? Was it the same thing? <laughs> Look here. Don't you think that perhaps we'd better go back and begin all over again? All right. Now, you said... You knew London almost less than anywhere else, uh -huh. and I said that oh, that Oh, do you mean, have I traveled a lot? Well, yes, I suppose that's what I did mean. Where? Almost everywhere. Except England. No, except London. I, I once tramped all the way from Glasgow to Southampton, but I missed London. Why? Uh, the lifts I got weren't going that way. Lifts? But you don't look like a hobo. <laughs> what do you want, a four-day stubble on my chin? It's your nails and your teeth. They're too good. A good American makes a point of his teeth in the jungle just as a good Englishman does of his dinner jacket. <laughs> Where have you been, actually? All over. The Orient, South Sea. Oh, I wish you'd tell me about oh, it. Oh, that takes time. Oh, I know. And I've got to go out. Uh, if you weren't going out, would you dine with me? Yes. I'm glad. Uh, would you have before? Uh, b b before what? Just before, when I first came. No. No, I don't think so. Why not? But I didn't know you. Well, you don't know me now. No, but I'd like to. Why? So I could tell you stories? No, no, I, I don't know. I, I just would. Do you think I was being fresh to come here after you? A little. But you didn't mind? It intrigued me. But you wouldn't have dined with me? No. Mm. I think I'd have felt you were taking too much for granted. What? That I would dine with you. Uh, had you any doubts that I would? Oh, plenty. And fears that you wouldn't. Why did you want me to? Because I liked you so much this afternoon. When yet we said nothing. Does that matter, really? And have we said anything now? No, I, I don't know that we have. Yet now I'll... I'll go away quite happy. When may I see you again? Uh, are you here for long? Uh, about three weeks, I think. Are you hoboing now? <laughs> no. I'm here at, on business. I'm living at the Ritz. Are you in business? Uh, I'm an architect. I, uh, I, I've become respectable the last seven years. Do you hate it? Oh, I'm a curious person. I, I don't think I hate anything. If you've got a job to oh, do, you... Oh, that's just it. I have no job to do, and I hate almost everything. What's the trouble? I'm bored. And I hate myself for being bored. No one's got a right to be wasting the time I waste. Well, what do you want to do with it? Well, that's what I most want to find out. Certainly not the old-fashioned idea of waiting around, waiting for matrimony, playing a sort of mental tisn't you, tisn't you with every man I meet. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, why not uh, do something uh, until it happens? Well, suggest something, and then I shall know why heaven sent you into my life. <laughs> uh, no, I'm afraid I can't offhand. Uh, worthwhile, I mean. Exactly. So I go on wasting my time in the hope of finding some excitement that I know I'd be too timid to take hold of if it offered. Why are you talking like this? Oh, I don't know. I don't care much for myself sometimes. Oh, that's too bad. Come on, snap out of it, Leonora. Uh, by the way, do you mind if I don't call you Leonora? It's my sister-in-law's name, and I can't bear her. <laughs> well, what would you like to call me? Steve. Steve? Yes. Why? Well, I don't know. I'd like to. I like you, Steve. I think I like you. Good. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me, miss, but it's ten past eight. Oh, well, 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 thank you, Florence. Oh, Florence. Yes, miss? Ring up Mrs. Waverton again, will you? And, and say, uh, say I've been delayed, uh, I've got a headache. So say I can't get there. Very good, miss. Oh, dear. Your maid looked a little disapproving. Uh, Florence was with us when I was born. She was very exercised about it. 
May I say thank you? You will dine with me? Uh, yes. Where would you like to go? Would you care to dance? Well, just let's just find somewhere and see, shall we? All right. Let's. Uh... Oh. <clears throat> uh, oh, Florence, did you give that message? Yes, miss. Mrs. Wavertree asked if you had a temperature. Uh, what did you say? I said I didn't think you'd taken it. I'll uh, just get my coat. You needn't wait up for me, Florence. Oh, excuse me, uh, uh, Florence. Uh, do you think you could get me a taxi? Very good, sir. And if anyone telephones, Miss Pericast's temperature is uh, just over 100. Is that all, sir? Well, I'd better say uh, 101 if it's a near relative. I'll telephone for a taxi. There. All ready. I'm afraid I've made an enemy of Florence. She'll probably shut the door in my face tomorrow. Well, I'll leave word that you're to be admitted. Just mention my name. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> no, really, I said that. Come idea. in. All right. Will you have a drink? Yes, thanks. Whiskey? Mm-hmm. I get it. Florence only leaves lemon squash out for me. Oh, don't nice girls drink whiskey in England? Oh, not a great deal, as a matter of fact. Oh, uh, well... Uh, what are you looking for? Oh, I was forgetting this was England. Ice? Mm. Oh. The English are so insular. I know. It's what makes them what they are. I'll go to the refrigerator. I'm rather afraid no, of... No, don't, don't bother. What's the time? Uh, quarter after. One? Mm-hmm. Want to go to bed? Not yet. It's been a grand evening. I've enjoyed it. Funny, you know, I nearly didn't go to that party this afternoon. But so did I. I mean, so didn't I. Oh, there you are. You see, it just goes to show. That's what I always say. Mm. Do you know, you're the first English girl I've met that I've really liked. The only one who's uh, got under my skin. Oh, that does sound horrid for you. <laughs> I'd like lots of Americans. Oh, we're nice people, really. I think so. Steve. Oh, please don't I? Oh. Well, there now. Well, what does that mean? Are you angry with me for kissing you? My good heavens, no. I'm afraid of English women. You don't call me an English woman. It sounds like golf clubs and fishing tackle. Oh, there's nothing like that about you, Steve. Oh, I've been wanting to do that all evening. Had you? Terribly. I think I've been rather wanting you to. Well... We're both happy. Steve. Oh, wait. Mm, what is it? I was thinking. If we're going on like this, I'd better shut these doors. I shouldn't really like Florence to see me. Oh, is she in the least likely to? Well, no, I, I think she's in bed, but I'd feel better. <laughs> okay. Steve, dear. Speaking to me? Yes. What? Nothing. Just Steve, dear. Oh. <sighs> I'm very happy. I like your hair. I take a lot of trouble with it. I like you. So I gather. Stop being funny, will you? What do you want me to be tragic? No. Well, then. Quiet. Oh. <laughs> Don't you think this is a little silly? Silly? Mm. No. Why? Uh, look, look here. I'd, uh, I'd like to be awfully frank. All right. Go on. Well, I'm not in the habit of indiscriminately kissing a strange man, and I'd rather... I'd rather we didn't misunderstand each other. Well? Well, I, I don't know what you're imagining, but... I'm sorry, it, it's no good. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I see. I'm sorry? Uh, what made you think I, I was, uh, imagining? Well, aren't all men always? What is that very cynical of me? No, it's perfectly true. You were imagining. Well, I, I was uh, wondering. I know. That's why I had to tell you. That was nice of you. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's not because I don't like you. No. It's just that, well, I, I'm I'm not made that way. Oh, I, I don't think it's anything to be proud of. I'm not conceited about it. But it just happens to be like that. Why are you telling me all this? Because I like you. And I want to be fair to you. What do I mean to myself? Well, anyway, I, I don't want you to think... Oh, I don't. What? That you were leading me on. That's what you meant, wasn't it? Yes, I suppose so. Oh, I do like you. You're a darling. Oh, no, no, please don't. Why shouldn't I kiss you? If, if I no longer imagine? Well, I'm, I'm afraid I like it too much. 
Oh. Yeah, yes, I see. <sighs> well? Well? Uh, what do we talk about? I don't know. No. It, it, it's a little difficult, isn't it? Shall I go? No, no, I, I don't want you. I assure you, I don't want to. Still, it, it is rather difficult like this. I know. Steve. Hmm? I think I'm a little in love with you. Oh, no. You're so adorable. <laughs> I love you, Steve. I love you, too. Oh, this is ridiculous. Why? Well, we've known each other, what is it, five hours? Well, that's long enough, surely. To be in love? I fell for you the moment I saw you. I was watching you from across the room, didn't you know? I knew I wanted to come and talk to you. We'll see each other lots. Lots. Three weeks, you said? Uh, let's not talk about no, that. No, no. What should we do tomorrow? Let, let's go into the country, can we, for the day? We'll take my car. Go, go down to Sussex, somewhere on the down. Oh, wonderful. Shall we drink ale? Yes. You don't know how disappointed I was the first time I came over and found that ale in England was the same as beer. I'd always pictured ale as something terribly special, like a uh, sack or mead. Or posets. What? But let's not have any posets. I know a little inn where we'll lunch with a stream and a garden. Our England is a garden. And a garden is a lovesome thing, God what? God what? What? What's what? The past tense of, what is it, wit. Conjugate. Oh, I can't. Well, I wit, thou wist. He wa Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> I'll call for you. How early? About ten. Well, I'm a lazy writer, but I'll make an exception. Ought I go now? I think you ought. Funny, Steve. Oh, but this is absurd of us. I don't know you. I, I don't know the first thing about you, and, and, and here we are behaving as so, though... Well, we, we can't be in love well, with each well, other. Well, let's not bother about it too much, shall we? We seem to like each other anyway. Besides, there's always Juliet. Juliet? She and Romeo did it in five speeches. Oh, I always said that it was an improbable play. If if I profane with my unworthiest hand, uh, how, how's it going? I don't know. Oh, we've got it here somewhere in, in the temple. Oh, good. Let's see. Oh, yes. Yes. Good. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Uh, oh, next, next page. Yeah. Uh, here. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle fine is this. My lips to blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a kiss. Fresh, I call it. Good pilgrim, you'd have wrung your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. The saints of hands the pilgrim's hands do touch. And palm to palm, it holy palmer's kiss. There you are. Well, we are hardly Romeo and Juliet, are we? Still, it is nice to think we've got a proceeding, sort of. We've got a million. I suppose we have. I've never believed in it till now. We live and learn. Good night. Sweet good night. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath. Why? Oh, I don't want to take it. Well, how then, but... Parting is such sweet sorrow. If we should say good night till it be morrow. <laughs> good night. Good night. Ten o'clock. I'll have the car ready. Good night, Steve. I have no joy of this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden. Poor Julius. In a moment, act two of There's Always Juliet, starring Margaret Phillips and Paul McGrath. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Now, act two of the best plays production of There's Always Juliet. Starring Margaret Phillips and Paul McGrath with Marjorie Maud and Richard Newton. Hello? Yes, madam. 
No, madam, she isn't. I don't know, I'm sure, madam. One moment, madam. I think that's her now. I'll just go and see. Miss. Miss. Mrs. Wavertree on the phone. She's rung up several times. Oh, what for? To know how you wear, miss. Oh, heaven. Yes, miss. Well, I'd better speak, I suppose. Oh, dear, what shall I say? Well, here goes. Uh, hello? Aunt Emily. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm better, Auntie. Well, I really don't know. Just an attack. It was most peculiar. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I am sorry. Yes, sorry. Yes. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, I know. I, I know. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm not laughing. No, 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 really, I'm not. Yes, uh, y- yes, yes, I know. Well, goodbye, Auntie. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, good, goodbye. Give my love to Uncle. Ooh. Was she very sore? Well, just a bit. Well, send I us forgot all about her. Send oh, it'll take more than flowers. Weeks of atonement. Oh, dear. I'm tired. It's the fresh air. It's good, though. Mmm. Oh, except dinner. Well, what did you call that stuff they gave us for dessert? Mold? Shape. Shape? Shape. Oh, well, that's about all it had. <laughs> the country was good, though. The trees and those cottage gardens coming home. Do villages like that make you want to renounce the world? They do me. You ought to cure yourself of this habit of wanting to renounce the world. You'd be miserable in a nunnery, you Oh, know. I suppose I should. Oh, but it is fun dramatizing myself. <laughs> oh, I can be happy for hours imagining myself dying of a broken heart or being ruined financially. I'm always so beautifully brave. You've obviously had a very happy life. Oh, I suppose so. Sheltered, anyway. I've never really had known trouble, as the saying goes. I've had my tonsils out, but that wasn't really serious. Mm, no. What's the matter? Hmm? Nothing. Why? You went all wistful. Have I trodden a secret sorrow or something? Did you love your tonsils? <laughs> oh, what is it? Tell me. You, you've done that before, didn't what? you? What? Well, gone serious on me. This afternoon in the downs, you suddenly behaved as if there was a sunset. What's the matter? You know, you've got a very funny face, really, when you come to look at well, it. Well, so have you. Your mouth's crooked. I like your ears, though. I hate ears that stick out. Oh, I keep them fresh. What are you looking at out there? Just the world outside. Oh? The world that you will never see, <laughs> poor little Emily, on your bed of sickness. Is it very beautiful? Tell me about the world outside, Daddy. Uh, snow. As far as you can see, Emily. The robins have eaten all the crumbs you put outside for them. Poor little girl. You'll never be able to run and skip and throw snowballs like the other children. Oh, don't cry, <laughs> Daddy. Don't cry. See, hmm? I am smiling. You must smile, too. Would you like me to lift you up and give you a peep at the world you'll never see? Uh, careful now. <laughs> Shut up, you sap. It's not your lungs, it's your legs. Oh. Oh. My back. My back. Oh. Oh, but the world is lovely. Lovely. Dead. Dead and never called me mother. I thought to pass away before, but still alive I am. And in the fields around, I hear the beating of a lamp. Bah! Oh, 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 it is. Oh, it is. Oh, it's you, no, it is. What, 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 what did you just call me? Oh, I called you Steve. Oh, it's funny, I, I don't know why, but I've been thinking of you as Steve ever since yesterday. All right. Let's both be Steve. 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 Oh, dear, this can't last. Why? Well, things being fun like this. You're <laughs> a darling fool, Steve. I say, are you hungry? Uh, I could toy with some food. Oh, so could I. I could do more than toy. Well, what do you say we go out somewhere? I'll dash over to the Ritz and be back in half an hour. How's that? Bye. It's been a good day. It's been a grand day. Three weeks. Twenty-one days. Oh, Steve, you are fun. Mrs. 
Enfield and call, miss. She said you had invited her for this afternoon. Oh, dear, yes, I had. And I meant to put her off. Was she very cross? Mm, no. I-, I told her you'd gone into the country for the day. She seemed amused, like. Did she ask any questions? Well, yes, miss. As if she was trying to pump me, like. What did you tell her? Nothing. Oh, oh. she did say that next time Mr. Houston called, I was to tell him Mrs. Enfield and had his cigarette case. And you said? I said I'd tell him, miss. I see, Florence. Thank you. That's torn it quite beautifully. Have I done wrong? Oh, no. Just ruined my reputation, that's all. Oh, miss. Oh, never mind, Florence. Uh, hello. Uh, Nora? Yes, speaking. Uh, I am. Oh, hello. Peter. Which Peter? Oh, Wormsley. Oh, y- yes, hello. I think I what? Oh, t- tomorrow evening. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid I can't. Oh, so am I. No, no, I, I'm afraid I can't manage that either. Oh, I, I don't know, Peter. I, I don't look like having much time free. Well, for, for the next three weeks. No, really, I've got some Americans to look after. And they take rather a lot of entertaining. Now, now, don't be silly. Oh, yes, I, I am sorry, but goodbye, Peter. Goodbye. Are you in there? Hello there. Good goodness, you've been quick. We're not going. What? Well, why not? I've something to tell you. What is it? Darling, it's bad news. Bad news. When I got back to the hotel, I found a cable waiting for me. What, what is it? I rushed straight round to you. Wednesday, the 13th. Yeah. That's tomorrow. I know. Well, are you going to? I guess I've got to. Who's Edison? My partner. It says, can you, sir? It means, will you? And will you means you must. Uh-huh. I see you do have to jump through hoops, don't you? Oh, darling, I hate it. I I knew there was a chance of this happening. Well, that's that, then. Don't be sore, Adney. Oh, it's all right. Let's sit down and talk about it. Uh, When will you come back? I can't before next year. Next year? I I know. Oh, but... Oh, but... Well, it's been very nice knowing you, Mr. Houston. I always said it was too good to last. Can't you come to the States? Oh, me? How? We'll get on a boat, a plane. But how can I? What, what reason could I give to mother and father? Well, haven't you friends in America that you could go and visit? How much do your parents control you? Well, I have to consider them. Yes, of course. Well, that's that, then. Yes. Uh, what time do you sail? Noon. Boat train from Waterloo at 8.30. Well, shall we go out all the same? I'd... Rather stay here and talk for a bit, anyway. All right. What shall we talk about? Us. Have you anything to say? Lots. I'm crazy about you. No, no, don't. Why not? Don't go on, please, or I shall cry. Oh, I hate scenes. Steve, would you consider marrying me? Steve? Would you? What? Could we do it tonight? Why, why, of course. No. Would well, you have to have an act of parliament? Well, no. I'll be gone in the morning. Oh, I know. Well, would you come after me and marry me? Oh, do, Steve, please. It isn't much to ask. Well, I couldn't. Oh, it would be too crazy. Oh, I-, I want to this minute terribly, just so as not to lose you, but but I have got some sense. What's sense got to do with well, it? everything. Now, it has. Now, now, look at it sensibly. I've known you 24 hours. Did you sleep last well, night? Well, not a great deal. Neither did I. Yes. But is marriage a cure for insomnia? Oh, Steve, we can't get married like this. I, I don't know a thing about you except that you're fun and, and I like you. Well, I should have thought those were reasons enough. Well, but be sensible. How can I over you? I tell you, I'm crazy about you. Well, suppose I said that I would come after you and marry you. Well, just imagine the scene with mother and father. If you were English, it would be mad enough, but, but a new country, new people, new everything. Well, I don't know anything at all about you. We, we seem to have talked about me all day. Now, now, it is a bit of a risk, just because of an infatuation. Oh, no, you, you don't mean that. I do. I, I do. Oh, Steve. Steve, dear. Even if you won't promise to marry me, come to America. Give me a chance. Get to know me. Bring a chaperone. Bring bring two. Bring 20. I'll say you'll come. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't think. But even if I, I did say I, I would let myself be carried away, how, how do I know how I'll feel after you've gone? I'll feel worse than ever. Oh, I know. So shall I. Then come. What do you want to know about me? I, I, I'll tell you anything. Well, well where, where, where you live, how you live, oh, I don't know. I have an apartment on Park Avenue. That, that doesn't mean anything to you. Are you well off? 
Oh, uh, I'm, I'm only trying to be practical. I'm sure it's the first question for the world. Oh, quite. I, I can support you. But tell me. Tell me something about your life. Oh, well, I get up at nine, uh, have a glass of orange juice. Oh, now, really? Well, darling, it's a bit vague. Oh, write all you know of the history of America, not more than 500 words. Well, have, have you a family? I have a mother. She lives in Colorado, where my home is. Oh. I have a son. A... Yes. Well, I told you I didn't know anything at all about you. I was married nearly seven years ago. I see. You haven't a wife. By any chance of it? Not anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. She's not dead. She's married again. You're divorced, then? Uh, where is your son? With my mother. How old is he? Six. I've had him to myself the last five years. Oh. Uh, what's he called? Jonathan. Jonathan. Well, tell me about your wife. Ah, <sighs> such a long time ago. Why did you break? I think she found she didn't like me very much. And you? I think I did once. Do you mind? Of course not. How strange. What is? All of this. I told you I didn't know you. Makes a difference? A little. How? It makes it all more grown up. Do you think I ought to have told you before? No. I do. I've been wanting to all day. That was why I went all wistful, as you call it. Oh. Only I, I didn't want it to get that serious. Then you agree it makes it serious? Well, in a way, I mean, I, I didn't want us to get too serious about each other too soon. But this summons makes a difference. Will you marry me, Steve? I can't. Oh, no, not because of what you've told me, or although it does change things. But because it shows me clearly what I'd be running into. I suppose so. I do love you, Dwight. There. I called you Dwight. That shows how serious I am. Oh, darling, I love you so much. Me too. Then you won't marry me. Oh, I can't. Like this, it, it's not enough. What's not enough? Love. This kind of love. Huh? Well, being in love's no kind of guarantee for happiness. In marriage, in a way, is it? Well, is it? Well, I don't trust all of this. It, it's never happened to me before. I, I don't believe in it. Besides, it, it wouldn't be in the least good in my trying to get to know you. So long as I'm in love with you, I haven't the chance to know whether I'd like you or not. What are you smiling at? You? Saying that? It's true. I, I like you? I think it's true. I like you. You want me? Yes. And I want you. That's why I don't trust any of it. It's all too swift and hectic. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Well, what, uh, what do we do about it? I can't imagine. All right? I am right. I guess so. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to be such a fool. Oh, it's, it's all right. Oh, please forgive me. I hate people who make scenes. Now, there. There, that's better. Now, what shall we do, Chef? Go, go out to supper? No. I want to make love to you. That's caddish of me, isn't it? Yes. Oh, Steve. Darling. Darling. Oh, no, dear. I love you, do you hear? Don't you dare forget it. I won't. Will you write to me? Mm -hmm. All the time? Mm -hmm. I'll be back next year. Next year. Steve, dear. I love you. I love your eyes. I... Your funny cat's eyes that go up at the corners. They do. Don't argue. I say they do. And your nose. And your ears. You've never seen them. Never mind. I love them all the same. And all of you. Oh, Steve, I'm going to hate tomorrow. Sweetheart, so am I. Yes, but you've got your job and your home. I shan't have anything but the memory of you and this. Oh, you're so adorable. Steve. No. No, we mustn't. Why? It's my turn to be sensible now. I'd still have to go in the morning. Well, why are we both so awfully sensible? Why can't one of us sweep the other off his feet? I know. Well... Having exhausted every other possibility, I, I suppose this is the end. The real end. I'm coming back. Well, next year, what's the good of that? You can't heat up a souffle. Won't you change your mind? Or keep it in a thermos. Please. Don't let's begin again. Well, what then? I suppose 
Well, we've got to say goodbye. Now? I, I should think we might as well. It isn't going to get any easier. I'd rather get it over. Okay. Goodbye, then, Steve. Good luck to you. And you? Uh, oh, excuse me, miss, but is there anything else you want tonight? What? Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, thank you, Florence. Uh, I'm not going out. Oh, I see, miss. Then uh, I'd better put your things away. Well? Yes, go now. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. Oh. Is there anything else, miss? What? Um, no, I don't think so. Then I'll say good night, miss. Miss. The world outside is, is very beautiful, Lawrence. Beg pardon? Oh, it, it's all right. There's nothing else, miss. No. Oh, you might get me some biscuits or something. I believe I'm hungry. Yes, miss. You wouldn't like uh, some milk or anything? No, no, thank you, Florence. Florence? Mr. Houston's gone. Y you may lock up. Very good, miss. He's gone back to America. Tonight? He's sailing in the morning. Oh, really? Oh, well, I'll say good night, dear. Good night, Florence. You are, miss. Uh, yes, Florence, here I am. You never said you weren't going to be in for lunch, miss, and Cook was keeping it out till half past two, close on. Oh, I'm sorry. Mrs. Enfielden called, miss. She wanted to know if you could tell her where to get in touch with Mr. Houston. Oh, did she? Well, next time she asks, tell her that Mr. Houston has gone to America and I don't know his address. I don't, Florence. Don't you, miss? No. Excuse me, miss, but... You're not fretting about anything, are you? Well, why do you ask that? Oh, I just wondered. You didn't eat lunch. That's always a sign. Now, I'm think. all right, Florence. I do wish your mother and father was back. You can't go on like this, starving yourself, not seeing anybody. I shall have to have the doctor, too. Now, Florence, please, I can't stand being fussed at. I've never seen you like this before, Miss. No, it's a surprise to me, too. It's Mr. Houston, isn't it, Miss? Mm-hmm. I thought it was. I couldn't help noticing. Do you like him, Fran? Well, Miss, I, I didn't really see much of him. He's a nice-looking gentleman. Yes. But he's gone back to America, you say? Well, I, I expect he'll be coming back. Not until next year, Fran. Of course, you, you haven't known him very long, have you, Miss? Not very. Excuse me, but are you engaged to him? Oh, no, Fran. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, miss. Oh, he did ask me. Oh, well. Oh, I dare say he'll ask you again, miss. I'd like to see you married. Well, it doesn't look as if you've got much chance. Oh, don't say that, miss. There's as good fish in the sea as ever came out of it. That, Florence, in my present state of mind, I believe to be profoundly untrue. Why don't you go out tonight somewhere, miss? Go to a play or to the pictures. Ring up somebody and ask them to go with you or take Lawrence, them. if you go on trying to buck me up, I shall howl. Oh, Miss Well, Leonora. I'm not in a very uh, pleasant state of mind, and, and I'm far better left all alone. Very good, Miss. Why don't you ring up someone and have a jolly... That evening? will be all, Florence. Yes, Miss. There's snow as far as you can see, Emily. The robins have eaten all the crumbs... We <clears throat> hello, is Mr. Wormsley in, please? Oh, hello, Peter. This is Leonora. I say, Peter, does that invitation to the night still hold good? Oh, are you free? Yes, I am free. My what? Oh, my Americans. They've gone. Yeah, they got a cable. So I, I thought if you had nothing to do, we might still go out together. Oh, I don't know. Something jolly? A, a review, if there is one. I, I'd like a good laugh. <laughs> yeah, all right, half past seven? Oh, don't be silly, Peter. 
Well, I don't see like an angel. Now, goodbye. Goodbye. Pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much. Oh. Well, and that's a silly thing to do, too. Oh, I wish it was raining. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Have a drink. Oh, thanks. Whiskey? Here, <laughs> <Yeah>, thanks. <laughs> Say there isn't any ice. Ice? Good heavens, you put ice in a whiskey and soda? A trick I learned thee now of one I danced with all. Oh, filthy American habit. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Well, here she goes. What's the time? Hmm? Oh, quarter past. One? Yes. Oh, do you want to go to bed? No, 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 not just yet. Oh, good show, don't you think? Mm hmm. You're looking awfully nice tonight, Leonora. Oh. oh. Awfully nice. No. No. What's the matter? Nothing, only, only don't. Oh, I say, what's the matter, Leonora? You, you've been so nice to me all evening, letting me hold your hand. I'm afraid I'm a bit absent minded tonight. Well, I did hope it meant you felt a bit more hearty about it. Oh, I'm sorry, Peter, but I have told you before. Oh, I know, but you, you don't have to want to marry me not to mind my kissing you. You've let me kiss you before. Have I? Yes. Well, it's always rather like getting a cricket ball in the face. Well, I'm fond of you, you know that. Oh, Peter, on. please, please, no, not but tonight. Why? Have you, have you fallen for someone else? Oh. Let it? Oh, well, I don't seem to be much use here, then, do I? No, no, Peter, don't go. Oh, what's the use of my staying? Well, just because I don't want you to be making love to me. Oh, I say, it's not fair. No? But you know how I feel about you. It's not much fun for me to sit there while you go on thinking about someone else. I won't. I won't. I promise I won't. Now, I'll forget all about it. So, so be nice to me, Peter. It's you that won't be nice to me. I don't mean that by be nice. What? What you meant. I don't know what you mean. You said... Look here. Don't you think we'd better go back and begin all over again? All right. You said be nice to me, and I oh, said... Oh, Peter, don't. Well, what do you want? Well, for just stay and talk pretty to me. What about? Well, how should I know? Oh, tell me, Peter. Do you know anything about telephone ships at sea? Tell... No, why? Well, I just wondered. Well, do you want to? Oh, no, 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 not really. I just wondered. Are you thinking of telephoning anyone? Oh, now, no. Who should I telephone? I don't know. I thought perhaps there's Americans of yours. What Americans? Well, the ones you've been carting about. Oh, those. Yes. Who were they? Oh, I don't know. Just Americans. Well, what were their names? But dear me, you do want to know a lot. Well, let me see. Um, Dwight Houston? Dwight Houston? Oh. Well, I've known him for years. Peter, you haven't. Why not? But I don't know. it. It's so extraordinary. Well, where did you meet him? Oh, I, I met him, first of all, about uh, 12 years ago in Burma. Oh, I didn't know he'd been over here this year. Did you like him, Peter? Yes, he's a good chap. Oh. Not like an American. Then if you know Americans, quite a lot of them aren't. Do you know any of his people? Yes. Are they nice, too? Oh, very exclusive, but they were jolly nice to us. Do you know anything about his wife? Yes, yes, I was there about the time of the smash-up. Shocking little... Uh, sorry, beast. Really? Yeah, he was too good for her, and to her, for that matter. What do you mean? Well, she ran off with his best friend, oh. I mean to say. She lives in Paris now. You can see her any day for yourself at the Ritz Bar. Was he very much in love with her? Oh, I don't know. I think he must have been. I say, he hasn't got married again, has he? No. Why? Oh, I don't know. He's a very popular chap. With the ladies? Yes, terribly. Well, tell me some more about him. Well, you've seen him since I have. Oh, yes, but he was only here a day or two. I, I didn't see much of him comparatively. What do you mean, comparatively? Oh, nothing. He, he's an architect, isn't he? You're a bit intrigued about him, aren't you? Oh, no. Well, you're asking a lot of questions. But curiosity, you know, just feminine curiosity. Right, I've never been asked so many questions in all my life. So it's him, is it? What do you mean? This chap you've fallen for, it's him. Oh, don't be a fool, Well, Peter. what do you want to know all his family history for, then? Peter, don't nag. You seem to forget I'm keen on you myself. Where did you meet him? The party. With Betty and Phil. Oh, so that's why you weren't going to have a free minute for the next three weeks. And now he's gone and you're still keen on him, eh? Ah. Did he make love to you? He was quite polite to me. The swine. Oh, now, Peter, really, why swine? What, to make love to you? Are you a swine, Peter? Well, that's different. Why? Well, because I'm in love oh. with you. And he's just a philanderer. 
How do you know? Well, it stands to reason. He ought to be horseless. And you were just saying how nice he was. He didn't ask you to marry him. Yes, he did. And you wouldn't because you saw what he was. There you are. It wasn't that at all. Well, what was it then? Well, what's it got to do with you anyway? Now, look here, Leonora. You know I'm fond of you, and I hate the idea of you being made unhappy. Well, I'm not unhappy. Well, you must be. Oh, I wish you'd go away. There you are. You see, you're crying. Well, then, I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> what are you doing? Calling you a taxi. Oh. Oh. Okay, Leonora, what is it? What have you got there, Annette? Oh, I must ring up. Who? What's all this about? What are you looking in for the telephone book? What? What's oh, the matter? Shut up, Peter. I'm busy. Well, there's nothing wrong with your people, is there? No. Not bad news? No. Well, what is it, then? Oh, drink your blasted drink. Well, well, I believe I will. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, is this the Ritz? I want apartment uh, 501, please. You can't wait yes. people at this time. I'm not. Uh, hello, is this Steve? Uh, yes. Oh, what are you doing here? Well, so I gathered. Uh, do you want to? Well, I, I, I don't know. Oh, no, no, I, I've, only, I've only just found your message. Are you dressed? Uh, yes. Well, I, I suppose so, if you really want to. Oh, wait a minute, Steve. I, I don't think... Oh, are, are you there? Are you still there? Um... Who was that, Leonora? Something's wrong. You're, you're shaking. No, I feel lovely now. Well, Peter, dear, I was calling you a taxi, wasn't I, when this little contretemps occurred? You want me to go? Well, that was the idea. Oh, can't I stay a bit longer? I don't think so. You're not expecting anyone, are you? Do you really want to know? Yes. All right, then, I'll tell you. Dwight Houston. Oh, oh shut up. Don't you believe? Oh, of course not. Who is he? I told you. Well, it, very well, if you don't want to... All right, I'm a liar. Now, Peter, darling, give me a cricket ball and go. You can be aggravating when you want to. Oh, I know. Thank you for a lovely evening, evening, Peter. I've had a beautiful time. I'm worried about you, Leonora. Oh, not half as worried as I am. Leonora, now well, look Peter, here. darling, you can see yourself out, can't you? Oh, you might leave the front door open. <sighs> well, so long, old girl. Goodbye, Peter. Don't forget about the door. What did you come back for? When I got on board, I found a cable from Addison telling me to stay over and see a client who's just arrived in England. Uh, uh, did you see your man? Oh, yes. We dined together. What have you been doing? Oh, I, I've been to the theater. I, I only just found your message. How long are you staying this time? Till Saturday. Another three days. Oh, it's teasing. What did you have to come back for? Do you mind? I think I mind. Why? Because I hate anticlimax. Steve, do you remember you said you were in hope of finding excitement, but that you knew you'd be too scared to take hold of it if offered? Well? I gathered you didn't altogether like that side of yourself. Well? It doesn't do to be too sensible about love, darling. It's, it's a reaction against Victorianism. What? Yes, Victorian girls were always marrying men they didn't know a thing about. They called it romance. Well, I'm all for romance myself. There was a lot you didn't tell me about your marriage, wasn't there? Do you know a man called Peter Wormsley? Porky Wormsley? Porky. Oh, <laughs> how nice. <laughs> well, I've been spending the evening with him. He told me quite a lot about you. I hope he gave me a good character. Oh, terribly. Until he found I was interested. <laughs> oh, but it wasn't only him. I lay awake all night, wondering whether I hadn't been the world's biggest fool. I read Bertrand Russell to console me. Did he? He said... Of all forms of caution, caution in love is perhaps the most fatal to true happiness. What? I howled and I read that. I wrote you the same thing last night. You did? Uh-huh. I was going to mail it from Sherbrooke. Oh, God, you thought you knew so much. That so long as you were in love with me, you couldn't know whether you liked me or not. Oh, Steve, when life deliberately offers you a second chance, it seems ungrateful not to take it. Oh, darling... At this time of night. Hello? Hello? Yes, who wants me? Vichy... Good heavens, mother and father, I hope there's nothing wrong. Hello? 
Hello, Mother. Yes. Oh, no, no, darling, it's all right. I haven't gone to bed. Oh, no. Oh, I'm all right, Mother. Why? Who, who told you? Aunt Emily, oh, no, no, I'm not really ill. No, no, really, I was just putting a... Well, I've been to the theater, darling. With Peter. Oh, no, he's gone. Oh, no, no. No, no, I'm quite all right now. Really, I am. You're coming back Friday. This Friday. You've got to sail Saturday. Oh, shut up. Well, darling, I've rather a surprise for you. I think I'm going to be married. Think? No, darling. Married. Married. No. No, of course it's not, Peter. It's an American. It's rather nice. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Not nothing, Mother. Only it's here now. I. Oh, well, I, I think you'd better speak to it. No. Well, wait a minute. Here. No. Go on. No, I. Oh, well. Hello? Mother? <laughs> <laughs> You have just heard the Best Plays production of There's Always Juliet, starring Margaret Phillips and Paul McGrath. And here once more is your host, drama critic John Chapman. And there we have it. A nice, bright romance with John Van Druthen playing an exceptionally efficient and articulate Cupid. Comedies such as this one seem so easy that they appear almost artless. But they aren't. They take great skill both in the writing and in the playing. And for the playing, we extend our thanks and give our applause to Miss Phillips, Mr. McGrath, Mr. Newton, and Miss Maud. Our best play for next week will be an American comedy which recently enjoyed a highly successful Broadway run when it was revived after an interval of several years. The play is The Male Animal by James Thurber and Elliot Nugent. Our principal actors will be the stars of the recent Broadway production, Mr. Nugent and Martha Scott. Others from this same company will include John Gerstad and Nancy Nugent. She is uh, Elliot's daughter. This is Chapman saying goodbye until next week. <laughs>